Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game from round 5 of the Super Bet Chess Classic. It's Konstantin Lupulescu vs Shakhri Armamedyarov. We haven't had a game uh, by Shakhri in uh, quite some time now, so hope you guys are ready for it. Uh, this one is... Uh... Uh, very very interesting uh, and uh, sorry about the previous video uh, I asked my surgeon and he says that yes the effects of uh, anesthesia are still uh, very much visible uh, but yeah uh, that is not the last time Fabi lost a game in classical chess he was uh, uh, actually to a niche in the candidates tournament so that being said uh, thank you for reminding me uh, now let's uh, check out this game so Konstantin with the white pieces opens with knight to f3. He goes for the reti opening. Uh, we have d5, e3, and now e6. We have c4 attacking the center here, and now bishop to e7. We have b3 now preparing to fianchetto the dark square bishop, but a uh, black attacks it. Uh... Uh, attacks the rook uh, uh, already on move four and this is a very interesting uh, bishop maneuver it, it doesn't have a name although it should have a name it's not fianchettoing the bishop this is fianchettoing the bishop uh, but this this does not have a name if any of you uh, have an interesting name that we can use uh, make sure to suggest one uh, in the comments and we might implement it from from the next video already so here, uh, the rook is under attack. Of course, we have to defend it. Knight to c3. Knight to e7 by Mamed Yarov, And now, bishop to b2. We have c5 now, uh, grabbing more space in the center. And now, there is one game uh, from 1993 between Borislav Ivkov and Kashiani Ketino, where c captures and d5 was played. Uh, Ivkov was able to win this game. Uh, but here, we have queen to c2. And it is now already, as of move 7, that we have a completely new game. So let's see how Mamed Yarov deals with this uh, idea. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, knight b to c6 he just continues development and now comes knight to a4 and already white is posing problems for black because the c5 pawn is under attack and uh, you are threatening to pick up the bishop and mess up a black pawn structure the problem with eliminating the bishop first is that uh, white can just play queen capture some b2 and now the g7 pawn and the c5 pawn are both under attack so you're going to lose a pawn here uh, so instead, after knight to a4, uh, we have b6 by Mamidyarov just defending this pawn and allowing the doubling of the uh, of the pawn. So pawn uh, bishop captures on f6, g captures, and now c captures on d5. Uh, we have queen captures on d5. You could capture with the pawn, but then your uh, king side defense is, uh, well, n non-existent, basically. So here we have queen captures on d5 and now knight back to c3. Uh, getting the knight back into the game uh, with an attack on the black queen. So queen to h5, and now uh, Lupulescu just goes knight to e4. He's th threatening knight captures on f6, and then he's going to win the queen uh, because the king and queen uh, will be under attack uh, at the same time. So here we have queen g6, now pinning the knight as the queen on c2 would hang, and now comes knight to h4. Uh, here you could go for for knight to d6 check. It looks like a very, uh, very... Uh, well, interesting idea, but uh, after king d7, the, your knight is under attack and also your queen is under attack. So you don't really have a good option here. You have to trade queens and then uh, either capture here or, or maybe play knight e4, go after the pawn. But after black defends, it's really not a problem. It's just a very, very nice position for black. Uh, so instead, after uh, queen to g6, we have knight to h4. Now, uh, again, uh, attacking the black queen. Now, all of these squares are taken away from the black queen. So you have to play queen to h6, which is not a problem. It comes with an attack on the knight. And now, knight to d6 with check. So here, you have to be a little bit careful. You can't play something like this. Otherwise, you're just going to get knight captures on f7 check with a, with a nice monster fork here. So instead, after knight to d6 check, we have king to f8. Uh, and here uh, you have to decide, do you want to capture here or do you want to play something like g3, defend your knight and then maybe try and play this game. Uh, seems also like a viable option. Uh, so in the game, Lupulescu decided to eliminate the bishop first. Uh, we have rook captures on c8 and now comes g3. Defending the knight, we have rook to d8. Uh, grabbing hold of the d4 square. Also, if needed, maybe you can uh, bring the rook into the game via, via rook to d5. Maybe you can play some like king g7, rook d6 or d5, get this rook into the game, uh, double up on the d file, a lot of uh, options uh, here. So here we have bishop to e2. Now Lopulescu uh, is maybe interested in castling and king to g7 now. 
now the rooks can be doubled here, for example, on the D file. Uh, and now, while well, white wants to castle, it could be a little bit dangerous, because if white castles, then we can go knight G6. And now, uh, you're threatening to just bust open the king's defenses, uh, or if white captures, then you're going to capture with the H1 and then have a nice queen rook battery here to attack the white king with. So white would have to go back, you, you don't really want to trade here, and then you, we just continue rook D6, rook H to D8, and, and so on. So black doesn't really have anything to worry about here, but a white instead decides to wait, he plays A3, takes away the B4 square uh, from the black knight, and now comes rook to D6. Now Mamidyarov might be interested in doubling up on the D file. Uh, we have f4, uh, really preventing this queen from uh, entering the game anytime soon because this is covered by the bishop, this is covered by the pawn, this is covered by the knight, so this queen is not going anywhere anytime soon. So rook h to d8 and now comes rook to d1. The d2 pawn is under attack and even though uh, you don't really want to give up uh, two rooks for a queen, uh, here in, in a position that's this close uh, and, and you have two knights, it would it would probably be a good idea. So instead, uh, rook to d1, just defending that pawn, and now comes f5. And f5 is uh, one of those moves that uh, you have to know what you're doing to play it, because if you, if it if it doesn't work, uh, it's just a weakening move. You simply allow uh, these two squares, for example, for, for the white knight to use. Uh, but uh, to come up with a move like f5, you have to visualize where your pieces um, uh, where, where do you want your pieces to be? Uh, you have to visualize this knight on e4, and if you like this, then uh, you can play a move like f5. Because now, after f5, what uh, Mamidyarov did is basically he planned knight to d5 to f6, and then he will have access to e4. And then you can do the same with the other knight. Then the other knight will take its place, knight to e7 to d5 to f6, and then, for example, to g4. So f5 really just... Um, uh, is a move that allows you to improve both of your knights. So here we have knight to f3, white also will use the space left behind, now the g5 and e5 squares are available to the white knight, knight to d5 and now comes uh, castles finally. Uh, we have king to g8, now getting uh, the king away from this uh, diagonal, you don't want to run into any checks anytime soon. Uh, and now comes rook to b1. Uh, we have a5, Mamedyarov uh, now really grabs hold of this b4 square, and now bishop to b5. Uh, not uh, not much to look at, more of a more of a waiting move. Uh, we have knight back at the e7, because th th these knights are very, very strong, or rather they will be very strong. So if you could maybe trade your bishop for one of them, could be um, it might be a good idea. Even though your pawns are on dark squares and your light square bishop is an excellent defender here, uh, you simply know that the knight will become uh, very, very, very powerful. So knight c to e7, uh, continuing with his plan, and now rook f to d1. Uh, we have knight to f6, now the knight has access to these two squares, and bishop back to f1. Uh, we have knight to g4, and now uh, it's a very, very unpleasant. You, you can never move this pawn anywhere because this pawn falls. You can't move this knight because then this pawn falls. So it's uh, very hard to play this with white. Uh, it's still okay with perfect play. You can still hold, but it's very, very ugly to play this. So here, bishop to g2 is fine. You could play this and then uh, just claim that black does not have an active plan. And black will probably play something like queen, uh, queen back uh, here. You're going to push the h pawn, maybe bring the knight to g6 and try to bust open the, the king's side. And the white will, of course, uh, try to prevent this. But uh, in the game, h3 was played. And even though h3 might be playable, uh, if bishop to g2 is playable, then you play bishop to g2. Maybe h3. Uh, h3 is just a weakening of your king's side, and you... Uh, it's just uh, already a very small victory for black. A small one, but it, it's still a victory. So knight to f6, now uh, you have created a target here. Also, this is the second target. It's going to be very easy to attack this one. Uh, we have d3, and now comes knight to c6. Uh, you will have support for, for pushing e5 in the future. Uh, we have rook to e1 and now queen to g7, putting pressure on the g3 pawn. Uh, we have queen to f2, defending it, and now king to h8. The king no longer needs to fear this diagonal, and now you are going to double up here on the g file and uh, make this pawn uh, a really vulnerable target. So here, queen to, uh, king to h2. We have rook to g8, putting more pressure here. For the moment, it's defended, but black will... Uh, 
uh, try to do something about this. So here, bishop to e2, making room for the rooks to also join uh, the defense uh, along the g file, and now knight to d5. So here, uh, the knight is a very, very unpleasant piece, puts pressure on e3, pr pressures this c3 pawn, it's going to attack the bishop and the rook here, and it's hard to play a move. For example, e4 uh, loses on the spot to knight c3. Now, the rook is under attack, and also this pawn is under attack. So you're going to play rook to c1, but now pawn captures here. Attacks the knight, and once you capture here, then knight captures. Uh, attacks the queen. There is now a triple attack on the g pawn. This is resigns for white. So instead, after knight to d5, we have bishop back to f1. And now comes e5, breaking through here in the center. Uh, so it's a very tricky move, and it allows white to defend, but it's... Uh, uh, it's so ugly to play to play this with white. Uh, in the game, f captures an e5 was uh, f captures an e5 was played, but this doesn't work. Uh, what you should have done is play knight to h4, but even this is very very hard to play. The problem is after e captures on f4, you don't have this knight captures uh, with an attack on the queen and the rook because here you have just pawn captures on g3 with check, and you don't have a good move. You have to trade. Now we're gonna just trade here captures captures, and now knight to e5, and everything is hanging here. Uh, the material is completely equal here, uh, but uh, white is just completely busted. For example, bishop to g2, uh, doesn't really matter. Knight to c3, attacks the rook here. Once the rook moves, you're just going to pick up this pawn, attack both of the rooks, and that's just it. For example, captures, captures, and the white is just demolished. So what you would have to do here, uh, after this knight to h4 idea, uh, and after a move like e captures on f4, you would have to capture back, uh, just e captures on f4, and then try and play this position where you now are threatening this, but we're going to play some like queen to d4, and then the game continues. So it's very hard for white, uh, but uh, it was his best chance. However, like I said, in the game after e5, f captures on e5 was played, uh, but now uh, black is just completely winning. So feel free to pause the video here. Uh, and figure out this uh, incredible idea while, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this, uh, well, very spotable move, if I do say so myself. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's Rook to G6. Now, it, it might seem like an obvious idea because uh, you see that the G3 pawn cannot be defended. Now, the reason why I think Lupulescu allowed this and did not go for the line that we've shown is that he probably calculated one move differently. He thought, okay, knight to H4, and now he thought that uh, Rook captures on G3 would was impossible because he had knight captures on f5 but he doesn't here after Mamedyarov played rook captures on g3 uh, he realized he does not have knight captures on f5 because knight captures on f5 although uh, looks incredible loses on the spot so once again uh, pause the video here and uh, find a refutation to knight f5 uh, while I again give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations for the second time. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's the incredible Rook to F3. This is what I believe Lupulescu missed, and this is uh, why he... Uh, allowed Mamedyar of the tripling uh, on the on the G file because now you don't have a move if you capture the rook then queen to G1 is checkmate if you don't capture the rook uh, well what do you do you could capture the queen but it doesn't matter rook captures on F2 comes with check and now uh, it doesn't matter you you could attack the rook we're just going to move the rook and now the knight hangs here you can't move the knight the knight is pinned and if you don't do this if you just block with the bishop well then we capture this one uh, uh, right away and then again we're just up a piece you cannot capture here the 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 bishop is pinned and there's there, there's just no playing this you could defend but knight captures on e3 adds a third attacker to the g2 g2 bishop so uh, here just everything loses and this is what i believe that happened so lupulescu missed this and now it doesn't really matter what he plays he's completely lost he played the d uh, d4 in the game uh, but now just uh, uh, here we have queen to g5 attacking the knight here Knight to g2, and now c captures on d4. There's really not all that much here uh, that Lupulescu can do. He played e captures on d4, but now just knight captures on d4, offering yet more material. Uh, and it was in this position on move 38 that Konstantin Lupulescu resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Here you resign uh, because knight to f3 is coming, and there's no defense against this. If you, if, if you grab the knight, then just rook captures on g2 check. If you capture queen captures with checkmate, 
knight if you move then we just play rook to g1 check again uh, if king h2 queen to g3 is checkmate if you capture the rook then queen captures and g1 is checkmate so that does not work and uh, another thing if you don't grab the knight if you just uh, you know play anything uh, other than this try and add another defender here uh, just knight f3 check and that's it you either give up the queen or you play king to h1 uh, the knight covers g1 and h2 both uh, and now just rook captures and h3 is checkmate so uh, that's it so great game by Lupulescu and a great tournament for him so far, but he uh, ran into a most unpleasant opponent. Now Mamedyarov uh, uh, really uh, won this one in, in great style. And it's uh, you see how he uh, Konstantin played a really, really fighting chess. He wanted to... Uh, take um, uh, take Mamedyarov head on and he allowed him to, to you know go after him but he miscalculated that one move again w w what is I, I believe is what happened uh, but yeah uh, that's chess you know things happen and uh, especially it's very nice when things happen in, in classical chess uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, currently in the lead after five rounds are uh, Wesley Saul, Alexander Grishuk, uh, and um, uh, he ha uh, Grishuk had a long struggle against uh, Deak. Uh, he uh, really, really played many, many moves to, to take him down. Uh, but yeah, the, the Romanian grandmasters are playing a, a brilliant tournament, and it really takes a lot for these uh, these monsters to, to take them down. Uh, and Mamedyarov. So Grishuk, Wesley Saul, and Mamedyarov are currently leading the tournament, but we'll see what happens more rounds to go. So uh, I'm not going to discuss the results of the other games from round five. I might cover a, a few more. Uh, so we'll see what happens. So once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Michael Hildebrand, uh, Steven Mego, uh, Mario Encinosa, Rick Eveno, and Stanley Hill for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of this very nice tournament, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and uh, whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.